I'm Ian Portalupi and welcome back to the Northland Workshop. Today we're going to be installing a riser block kit in this bandsaw. Now why do I need a riser block kit? Well, in an upcoming project I'm going to be making a bunch of thin panels and in order to save some wood and save time over at the thickness planer I want to be able to resaw those boards standing on edge into thinner panels. That means it'll take less passes through the thickness planer to get it down to final thickness and instead of taking one board and turning it into one thin board, I'll be able to get two thin boards out of each board and at the price of lumber these days, I want to get it to go as far as it can go. So that's what we're going to do today. Now this bandsaw is a rigid bandsaw. It was made in Taiwan. There are two main classes of 14 inch bandsaws. There are the import saws and then there are the old Rockwell Delta saws that were made here. Before you buy the riser block kit you want to know what type of saw you have. Whether it's an import or it's a domestically made one because the kits are different. And the difference lies right here with the actual riser block. This is a 6 inch riser block made to go on an imported saw. It has alignment pins here and here that when you set the top of the saw down on it they go into corresponding holes in the bottom of that casting and if we look this has matching holes here to go and align with the pins in the bottom half of the bandsaw. And what that does is it keeps everything lined up so it doesn't twist side to side and you don't have to spend lots of time trying to align the wheels afterwards. It saves a lot of time and if you ever move the saw these keep them in alignment so they don't twist. These have different spacings whether it's an imported saw or a domestically made saw. The imports did a good job copying just about everything else, but for whatever reason they changed the locations of these pins. On a delta, they're farther out to the corners, and as you can see, these are kind of closer to the inside. So just be aware of that. If you have an imported saw, whether it's a rigid, a grizzly, a jet, what have you, you can use a different brand's riser block kit on your saw. So in this case you'll notice this is in jet white because the jet riser block kit happened to be about seventy dollars cheaper than the rigid riser block kit and everything is compatible with it. One thing you want to watch out for however is the replacement guide post. So this one has a replacement guide post because it has to be six inches longer than the original one and you need to know what size guide post your saw takes. The rigid takes a 7 8 that's the standard for modern import saws so if you have a grizzly, a jet that is a white jet not a blue older jet chances are it's going to take a 7 8 diameter guide post. However, you want to check that because some of them, the older ones especially, take a three quarter inch guide post. So just be aware that that is the determining factor. Any import riser block will work on any import saw. With the deltas, you need one that fits a delta that has the pins farther out and with a delta you may or may not have a round guide post or a hexagon shaped guide post. So there's a little bit more to those kits. The other thing is those kits tend to be expensive. The cheapest kit I could find for my Delta bandsaw was about $270, which is why I went with putting the riser block kit on the rigid because this kit right here that came with the guards, the instruction, a blade, new blade guard, long bolt, and of course the riser block itself was $99. So just my advice to you would be shop around if it doesn't bug you too much that the color of the parts might not 
match the color of your machine, you can save quite a bit of money that way. Apparently, paint is very expensive. If I'm going through the hassle of installing a riser block on the saw, the last thing I want to do is have to come up with some sort of homemade fence for the thing. So I went ahead and I ordered a fence for it too from the same company that I bought the riser block kit from. And you'll notice this says Jet on it. Well, this is even easier than the riser block kit because this is just a standard fence that'll fit just about any 14 inch bandsaw. This will even fit my old Rockwell one because all the tables seem to be drilled and tapped in the exact same place. So it came with this front bracket, front rail, back rail, bag of hardware, and of course the fence. So we'll be installing that too. Again, my suggestion to you for this is find a style of fence that you like or look to see what the best deal on a fence is and go with that because it'll fit your bandsaw and if for some reason it doesn't all you have to do is drill two holes in the thing and it'll bolt right up to the front. There's one more thing you need to think about before deciding to put a riser block kit on your bandsaw and that is the motor of the bandsaw because resawing takes more power than cutting out curves in three-quarter inch thick stock. This motor on the Rigid is a three-quarter horsepower motor. That will probably do it as long as I don't ask it to resaw all the time and I just understand that I can't shove the wood through as fast as I can. However, if you're planning on doing a lot of resawing with your bandsaw, you're much better off with a one and a half horsepower motor on the thing. The first thing I want to do is obviously take the blade off so I can start disassembling the saw. And for that, I just need to take the pin out of the table that keeps it lined up. And I can go ahead and take the blade off. One thing to keep in mind when putting a riser block kit on your bandsaw is the stock 93 and a half inch bandsaw blades will no longer fit. They're just not long enough. So you'll want to stock up on one or more of the 105 inch long blades. With the blade removed, I can go ahead and remove the switch. And I need to remove the switch because it's attached to the arm right here. When I take this whole thing off, I don't want it tethered to the motor. The other thing is, is that the switch and the cord is no longer going to be able to reach its original mounting location once I put the riser block on. Now that riser block has holes threaded and tapped in it for a switch. Now I don't know if the jet switch has the same hole spacing this one does so we'll see if it matches up, but I have a feeling it probably will. I need to remove this guard because that is screwed in up here and it's screwed in down there. And when I go to lift this thing off, I'd like it to actually come apart. And that's just done on this saw with a Phillips head screwdriver. It would be really tempting right now to take this bolt out. The problem with that is as soon as I take this bolt out, this whole thing's going to tip this way. So what I want to do, this one has the quick release on it, so I get that up out of the way. I'm going to take a scrap piece of wood and put it under the guide assembly. I'm going to loosen it up and put it down just like that. So it acts as an outrigger for this thing. So now as I loosen this up, it's not going to pitch that way. So now to remove this bolt on the rigid saw, it's a 15 16 wrench on both the top and the bottom. And they don't give you a whole lot of space to work right here, but I think I can do it. The other nice thing is because the castings are slotted, 
I just have to loosen it up and I can pull it right out. Now when I pull this bolt out, I want to make sure I'm hanging on to this because even though I've got the outrigger set out here to keep it from going that way, there's really not a whole lot keeping it from tipping forward or backwards and I'd rather not get smushed by this thing this early in the video. Now I can go ahead, I gotta pick it up off those alignment pins and I'm just gonna carry it around the workbench and set it down. The top of the bandsaw face down on the workbench, I want to deal with this guide assembly. First thing I want to do is loosen it up and take it off, and I'm not going to put that back on the guide post until I'm done installing the bandsaw back on the bottom half of the saw because I'm going to have to line that up. However, what I want to do while I have this thing flopped down here is exchange the short factory guide post for the longer guide post. Now there's one thing to watch out for with these things. Right here it has a spring-loaded ball bearing that rides up and down in that V and keeps it from spinning when you loosen up this knob. What you don't want to do is loosen up this knob and pull this rod right out because that ball bearing is going to come shooting out of there and good luck trying to find that thing again. I learned that lesson years ago when I first got this thing because this rod didn't travel parallel to the back of the blade so I ended up having to file a bit of junk out of the hole here and when I pulled the rod out I heard this little tink and the ball bearing went scooting under the workbench. So learn from my mistakes, don't pull this thing out. What we want to do is push it out with the new guide post because if we can do this successfully there we go the ball bearing doesn't have a chance to escape and now we have the brand new guide post in there safe and sound and of course this is now just a spare part along with that blade guard now the moment of truth do the pins line up Yes, but they don't slide in the holes. Why? Well, there's a thick coating of paint in those holes. It's a nice paint job, but I don't really want them in the alignment holes. So what I'm going to do is find a drill bit and just try and clean out some of that paint. So a quarter inch drill bit fits in there fairly loosely. So I think if we just take our time, clean out the paint, trying not to enlarge the holes unnecessarily. Let's see how that goes. Now, you'll notice on this thing it says up. Well, it's fairly obvious because we've got pins here and holes here. We've got pins here and holes on the top of the bandsaw. But that doesn't tell us which way it needs to face. Well, this has the threaded holes for the switch, so I'm going to assume that means it faces out that way. And look, cleaning out the paint did it. Nice snug fit, there's no slop. And we are ready to install the top half of the bandsaw. Okay, let's see if we can put this back together. There's that. Now I added this 2x4 right here because without the actual guide assembly on the bottom of this rod, I was afraid it was going to be a little too short. But I think I need to lower it just a little bit. Right about. That looks good. Now I can snug it down. So I don't really want to let go of this thing until I get the bolt in place. So what I'm going to do, push the bolt up from the bottom. It seems to want to lean forward, so I guess I will use my head to support it. And then I will get the nut put on. Now I can go ahead and tighten it down using the same wrenches that I used to remove the old bolt. And now I can install the new blade guard. 
of slides over where the old one used to be, and I can use the exact same screws to attach it together. As a bonus, that blade guard is metal. The old one was plastic. Now, there appears to be a slight issue here, because as I'm tightening this down, I'm seeing this thing twist. It would appear the cause of the issue are these screws that hold the hinge for the lower door in place. The heads of them are hitting the back of this guard. I kind of need those screws there to keep the door on the bandsaw. So I think what I'm going to have to do is take a hacksaw and notch out this guard just a little bit to give me clearance for these screw heads. Apparently these screw heads are in a different spot on a jet bandsaw. I marked it with a sharpie where I figured I could notch it out, but when I removed it I saw the paint's actually chipped where the screw head was pressing into it. So that gives me a real clear indication where I need to remove metal. And I think because it's this little lip right here, I don't really need to notch this thing with a hacksaw like I thought I would. I can just use a regular file because this is just aluminum. There, after just a little bit of filing, that fits fine. Now we can go ahead and see if the factory switch will thread into those new holes. So I got one of the rigid screws. I'm just going to see does it even match. Hey, it does. Okay. I think we'll be able to just mount this right back to the riser block. Perfect. Now all I need to do is install the guide assembly and we can put the fence on this thing. I installed the blade guides and the new two-piece guard and the way the guard works is when it's down low there's this space up above so I simply loosen up the wing nut I can slide the guard up and now my hands are protected from the blade up there. If I lift this up to get full resaw capacity, I simply lower this down because otherwise it would hit the top of the upper wheel housing. The first step in installing the fence is to go ahead and thread the bolts through the holes in this wide piece of angle iron into the holes in the front of the table. Now, I don't want to tighten these down past hand tight right now because these holes are slotted so I can adjust the height of it up and down and I'm not quite sure what height it's supposed to be at until I put the front bar and the fence on. And speaking of the front bar, now it is time to use these three holes and these slotted holes right here and attach the front rail. Just be aware if you buy this jet fence that the three holes on the bottom of the front rail that correspond with these slots right here are drilled and tapped into the bar itself. So you're threading directly into it. And on mine at least, they painted the front rail after they drilled and tapped the holes. That's why it's upside down right now and I'm threading the bolts in because it was rather difficult to get the thread started in a couple of these holes. So just be aware of that if you get one and you're wondering why the bolts won't go in, it's because there's quite a bit of paint down in there. I'm pretty much done with the installation of the fence and the riser block. I'm waiting for the resaw blades to get here so I can install that and do the final adjustment of everything because I need to go through this thing now that I've got this riser block in there 
things might not be lined up quite right and I need to do a tune-up on this thing. But the procedure for doing the tune-up on this is exactly like the video I did on my Rockwell bandsaw and tuning that thing up. There are, however, a couple things I want to talk about with this fence because adjusting this fence is different than the fence on the Rockwell bandsaw. This one, it has those three slots in the bottom of this piece of angle iron right here. What that allows me to do, once I have a blade in here, is to put the rip fence right up next to the blade and slide this front rail side to side as a course adjustment for this tape measure that's applied to the front so I can zero out the rip scale. The pointer of the rip scale also has an elongated hole that I can slide side to side to fine tune it once I get this locked down because most likely once I tighten these things down it'll shift a little bit. But to do the rough adjustment I actually slide this whole front rail side to side. The fence itself adjusts much like a regular Beesmeyer style T-Fence for a table saw. It's got two set screws in the front that push in on these pads so you can adjust it this way and this way. The other thing is that I have to adjust this front rail up and down so that way it's high enough that the fence clears the table but low enough that it's not sticking up past the miter gauge slot bottom. The other thing is to adjust this fence square to the table this way and this way. What I need to do is snug these things down and then simply tap it up or down depending on which way the face of this fence needs to go. So that's how I adjust the fence side to side. Left to right is done with the set screws and then course adjustment for the tape, slide the bar, fine adjustment for the pointer is to actually move the little pointer in its elongated hole. Other than that, this thing will tune up just like a regular bandsaw, but now I have 12 inches of resaw capacity.